thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I'm doing my wrap up and bit chat about the week just gone by. Continuing with my Friday Reads theme, although um, today is actually Saturday because I spent yesterday in the homeland of Essex with my family, which is lovely. Um, so yes, it's Saturday today, but we'll pretend it's a Friday Reads. So starting off with what I read in the last week so the first book that I finished last week was this one which is The Descendants by Carrie Hart Hemmings which I've had on my TBR for a good three or four years so I'm really pleased that I've read this one and um this was a good book it was about the main character who is played by George Clooney in the film adaptation and is called Matt his wife is in a coma so she's had a jet ski or something speedboat accident something like that and she is in a coma and they have two daughters together one who is at boarding school who's about 18 and one who's 10 <clears throat> and he's been a quite an absent father for the girls he doesn't really know them very well and he's a lawyer and he's been working a lot and the book is basically him getting to know his daughters whilst his wife is in this coma and trying to support them and realise he has to step up and be a better father. But it's also reflections on his marriage and the life that is actually turns out to be a bit different than what he thought it was in terms of his relationship. I thought it was I thought it was good. Like there's there's also another dynamic going through the book because he has been born in Hawaii and so have his daughters. But his, I think it's his great granddad came to Hawaii as a missionary and married a Hawaiian princess against her family's wishes. And then they had lots of land, which they then passed down to Ma uh, Matt. They're not like ancestrally Hawaiian. And so he's kind of uncomfortable with it. The people are uncomfortable with it. And him and his cousins are trying to decide like what to do with this land as well. And that's sort of waving through the story too. So this book is at times funny but also did make me cry about three times towards the end of the book when um things are happening with the mum in the coma so it was quite sad at times but I did really enjoy it and it was a really quick read um I read it in like two or three days so I think I gave it four stars in the end so that was good and that was for my TBR spin and for my Ben Reads Good reading challenge so the other book that I finished was the audio book I was listening to, which was Gut by Julia Enders. And I didn't enjoy this, unfortunately. I think I just started it when I checked in last week. And I ended up giving it two and a half stars because it wasn't a bad book. I just, it didn't meet my needs. And I think that might be because of my job rather than because because I'm not maybe the target audience for this book I found some of the explanations for things really interesting and then others like massively oversimplified and if you have this problem and you do this you'll be fine and it it was just like very oversimplified for, for some things but then quite detailed in other things so I don't really know if it was just me and I found the narrator a little bit annoying as well it's also translated from German, but that could have played a part in it as well in the humour and stuff. Anyway, so I didn't really think it was great, um, but there might be other people out there who don't know much about the, the gut who really, really enjoy it. So if you think it sounds interesting, then I would um, go ahead and check it out anyway. So they're the two books that I finished, and then I've started two more Women's Price books. So I've started Night Bloom by Peace Adzo Menzi and... This one I'm listening to on Spotify because somebody kindly told me that you can get 15 hours of audiobooks per month for free on Spotify. We've got like a family membership. So I am listening to that on Spotify, which is costing me nothing. And I'm really enjoying it. So I've seen a few reviews when we did the plod along, uh, the one with Simon and Louise Savage last week. There was a few people in the comments who were saying that they had either DNF'd it or they only really liked the second half and I have to say I'm on the first half I th I'm about 20% in and I think it's really good so we're following um initially two cousins so um there's Akofa and Selassie 
and their mums are best friends and Akofa comes from a family which is quite wealthy and they're in Ghana and um, her parents are very passionate about education. She has quite a strict upbringing but she's very uh, academic and she does lots of work. She works really hard, gets into good schools and everything and then Selassie isn't really interested in that kind of thing and she sort of goes a little bit off on her own path and um, the cousins sort of drift apart a little bit and we're currently just following really a Kofa story and she's now at doing pre-med in the uh, United States and um, she's sort of finding out how different life is as a young black woman in the United States compared to in Ghana and Selassie is kind of out of the picture at the moment but I think that in the second half of the book we're going to hear from Selassie and hear her side of the story and everybody sort of says in their reviews I've seen that they preferred the second half so that's good because I'm really enjoying the first half I am really enjoying the narrator and I say this every time but when you have a own voices narrator who's reading in the accent of the place where the book is set I just find that really adds an extra layer of depth to the story I love that so I think this is great so far and um yeah I'm really glad that I'm listening to it I think it's uh, a good listen definitely and then the other book that I'm reading from the Women's Prize which is I've got from the library is The Maiden by Kate Foster so I haven't seen that many positive reviews of this although I did see Katie from Books and Things gave this a five star rating on either Goodreads or Storygraph I'm not sure which about 20% into this one this is based on a true story I think and um, it's set in the six, late 1600s in Edinburgh. We're following our main protagonist who's called Christian, which I've never heard of a girl called Christian before, but she's called Christian. She's Lady Christian. She's um, from a wealthy family. She's um, part of the sort of upper classes of society and she is getting married. But the very first bit, bit of the book, she is sentenced to death for murdering her uncle, who we know from the back of the book is also her lover. Now, this is obviously incestuous, but her uncle is her uncle by marriage, not by blood, but it still feels really creepy. Um, and then the other perspective that we have is a girl called Violet, who is the... She starts off as a sex worker and she is being hired by uh, the uncle, who brings her to his castle for long periods of time and we know that in the beginning of the book in the trial she is the witness who says that it was Christian who killed her, the uncle and Christian is like she's lying it's not me who killed him so I don't know what's happened yet um I think there's probably going to be twists and turns I'm sure it's not just as simple as that and so we're getting yeah a couple of chapters from each perspective I'm finding that the story is very gripping that when I'm reading it I don't want to stop reading it I want to keep going every time there's another chapter I'm like oh just one more chapter and the only thing that's kind of stopping me is either if I've had plans or if I've had to go to sleep um, so I, I think it's going to be quite a quick read and even though crime's not my preferred genre I do I am finding it interesting and gripping um, I've heard people say it's similar to the marriage portrait but not as good it's not it's not written as well as the marriage portrait um, but that and it's it's not the same in that we don't think that her husband's trying to kill her, which is this, what happens at the start of the marriage portrait. But I can see the sort of similar themes in terms of like historical setting and starting with kind of the end of the book and working going back in time and then getting back to that point. I'm enjoying it and it's quite easy to read. So they're the current reads, and then. The next plans, so I have two things going on next, so another Women's Prize book is coming from the library, which is Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan, and I was the most excited about this book when the long list came out, so when I was reading all of the blurbs, this is the one that I thought, yes, I really want to read this one, so I'm really excited. I haven't heard a single bad review of this book so far either. All I know is it's set in, I think it's in Jaffna in Sri Lanka. Yes, and it's about a 16-year-old girl who wants to be a doctor and I know she has some brothers and they become involved in the war in Sri Lanka and seeing as it's called Brotherless Night, I'm guessing they don't fare too well either but I don't really want to know more about it going in but I'm excited to pick it up and start reading it. 
and then the second book that I'm re going to read next is my Buddy Read with Joe. So this month we've chosen to Buddy Read James Baldwin, um, Giovanni's Room, which is exciting. I've got all my um, checking points mapped out already. It's only a really little book. It's just over 100 pages, but I'm really excited to try my first James Baldwin. I know this is like a queer love story um, and I think it's not the happiest story, but I'm really excited to get my teeth into his writing because it's supposed to be wonderful. So that is my plans in terms of the women's prize i'm not doing badly so i finished yeah finished two so far so restless dolly Monda and the wren the wren and then i'm obviously reading night bloom and the maiden so that's four and then once i've finished brotherless night that'll be five um and i guess then it won't be that long till the long list comes out i can probably get one or two more in i've got um order me human failings on order from the library and I've got then she fell on order from the library I noticed that then she fell is actually 99p on kindle at the moment so I might get it from there instead of the library and I wasn't that keen to read that one but actually I was looking last night and the ratings for it are really good and I think it's about postpartum psychosis so there's lots of themes of having small babies and how difficult it is on the women's prize this year for fiction and non-fiction which I thought was interesting um because there's soldier sailor matrescence as well so yeah I, I might head to one of those next oh actually no I bought soldier sailor so I'll probably head to soulja sailor after I've after I've finished brotherless night and night bloom um yeah but it's exciting times anyway so let me know what you've been reading what you are reading now what you're reading next any recommendations that you have i haven't hauled anything this week i've been very good i don't think i've hauled anything um so yeah so that's that's good nothing's been added to my tbr this week but yeah i hope that you have a really lovely week and i will speak to you all soon bye